<clears throat> Hi, I'm Professor Goins. Welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you look for videos explaining topics in any college mathematics course, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you are in the right spot. That said, let's go ahead and get into the current video. I want to take a look at something called the total derivative. Now, in your calculus courses, you know, certainly in your Calc 1, Calc 2 course, you talk about a derivative, and then in Calc 3, you're going to look at what's called a partial derivative. Um, usually, you don't hear about the term total derivative until later courses, but it does use the same material from your calculus sequence. And once you get into Calc 3 courses, as you'll see the notation and concepts, we'll need Calc 3 stuff. Uh, but the idea is it, it, it is sort of in line with the um, difficulty of those materials. So let's go ahead and talk about it. A partial derivative takes a look at approximating a function in one direction or with respect to one variable. A total derivative provides an approximation of a function using all of the variables. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that's going to look like. So definition. for a function f that's going to take n real inputs and output, say, m, uh, an m tuple, so like from r2 to r3, r5 to r4, whatever the case may be, I'm taking multiple inputs and giving multiple outputs out. Um, again, it's a single output, but it's going to be like, say, an ordered triple or ordered quadruple, things like that, so I've got multiple components of that output. Uh, for this type of a function, we can write f, which takes, well, it's n input. So I'm going to write this as um, a column here, x1, x2, through xn. And the output is, I'll write this also sort of as a, it looks like a column vector. And each component here is going to be a function, f, say, 1 which has inputs x1 through xn, and then all the way through fm, which has components or inputs x1 through xn. Notice that there are m of those functions. And fi of x1 through xn is a function from r n to r. So these are all real valued functions with multiple inputs. Now, let's say I have a function of this form, right? I've got say ordered triple and I output an ordered quadruple. What can we say about the derivative of something like that, right? It's going to have um, lots of components to it because there's lots of inputs, lots of outputs, there's lots of things going on. Um, the derivative is actually a pretty simple um, construction here. So for this type of a function, the total derivative is given by the following, right? The notation for the total derivative is df, and it's given by a matrix. Now what I do is for the first row of this matrix, I'm going to take the following partial derivatives df1, dx1, df1, dx2. So partial derivative of the first component function with respect to the first variable, partial derivative of the first component function with respect to the second variable, so on and so forth, until I get to the partial derivative of the first component function with respect to the last variable. That's going to be my first row of this matrix. The second row of the matrix is going to start with the second component function. It'd be the first derivative of the second component function with respect to the first variable, so on and so forth, all the way to the partial of the second component function, again, with respect to the last variable. Then we'll go all the way down to the last component function, partial derivative with respect to the first variable, all the way to the partial derivative 
of the last component function with respect to the last variable. So it's this matrix that consists of a whole bunch of different partial derivatives. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you in this current video how to compute some um, total derivatives. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to do some applications with not only the total derivative, but I'm also going to introduce, um, think of this as like a first derivative. What would a second derivative um, look like? What would that even consist of? And so I'm going to do some applications with those in some upcoming videos. Uh, first and foremost, so let's just compute a total derivative of a function, say two inputs and two outputs. Let's say I've got the following function. F of x, y, of course, usually we, you know, you would be more familiar writing this as f of x comma y. So sometimes for notational purposes, I'll write it as a stack. Um, for example, if I've got four or five variables, sometimes it's, it's nice to write those as a stack and same thing over here, especially over here if these are sort of long expressions. It's easier to read if I have it written as a stack as opposed to written as uh, this, this long line. And let's say this is equal to x squared y, and then I've got 4x plus 5y, right? Notice that the first component here is with respect to these variables. The second component functions with respect to those variables, so it kind of fits this format here. And this would, of course, be a function from R2 to R2. Let's compute the, the total derivative of this function. It's going to be a matrix with two rows and two columns. The first row, I use the first component function, and I take the partial with respect to x, which would be 2xy. The second column would be the partial derivative with respect to the second variable, which would be x squared. The second row, I'm going to use the second component function. First column, I do the partial derivative with respect to the first variable, which would be four. Second column, I do the partial derivative with respect to the second variable, which would be five. So this would be the total derivative of that function right there. I'm gonna do another example, but before I do that, I wanna kind of show you a way to um, maybe bookkeep this a little bit easier to kind of keep track of what the what partial derivatives are where, especially like in the next example, when I've got three variables and then I'm gonna have three component functions. It, it, it's, I'm gonna show you a way to kind of keep track of these partial derivatives a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna introduce the following notation. All right, the gradient of f, and then I'll put in a parentheses and put a star outside of it. This is going to denote the components of the, of the gradient of f um, listed horizontally, not in a vector, not with commas, right? Notice that these right here, these are elements of the matrix. It's not a list. It's just the elements just, um, it's not listed like in like this one comma, this one comma, this one, like you would see in say an N tuple or in a vector or something like that. It just has those individual components. So this is going to consist of the elements of the gradient of a function just listed one after another. And using that, I can write the total derivative of a, of a function as follows. Notice that the, the components of this first row, if I was to compute the gradient of the function f1, the, the vector, right, that gradient, the first component would be the, its partial derivative with respect to x1. The second component would be with respect to x2. That's exactly what these elements are. Therefore, the total derivative of a function is given by components of the gradient of the first component function the components of the gradient of the second component function all the way down to the components of the um, what I call the M I think that was a variable I use or the index I used components of that gradient so therefore 
if I wanted to say compute the total derivative of this function here, all I have to do is say, okay, well, let's see, first component function, let's list the great elements of the gradient, elements of the gradient. And it's much easier to track what the different partial derivatives are when I start sort of getting into like the body of this matrix. So let's go ahead then and compute a total derivative of a function with more components. All right, let's say for example, f of x, y, z is given by, let's say I've got 2x plus y, and then I've got x squared plus z squared, and then on the bottom let's do x, y plus uh, 3z, right? Each of those component functions has those different variables in it. Let's compute the total derivative of that. In fact, go ahead and pause the video and then compute it and then match and see if you get what I get. Let's uh, compare. The total derivative of that function is going to have the following components. Using this idea right here, let's focus on the component function 2x plus y and what would the elements of its gradient be? Well, it'd be two y and, or sorry, two, one, and zero. Two, sorry, two, one, and zero. Two, one, zero, right? Partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. Second component function, what would the gradient elements be? So partial with respect to x, y, z would be two x, zero, two, z. Third component, what would its gradient look like? Well, partial with respect to x, y, and z. Partial with respect to x would be y. Partial with respect to y would be x. Partial with respect to z would be three. So there's the total derivative of this function right here. Again, it's a pretty simple concept after you're comfortable with the notation and computing partial derivatives. In subsequent videos, we'll go ahead and we'll look at some applications of this. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to introduce what this total derivative idea is all about. Um, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing.